So Jane Crawford, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you've just finished a debate here at the Cambridge Union all about mental health and being more open-minded about talking about it. Why did you think it was so important to speak at this event in particular? I just think, you know, whenever there's a platform to talk about mental health, you really have to kind of like sort of grab the ball by the horns and, and just crack on with it because, you know, it's still something that has a massive stigma around it. Um, I feel like, you know, just talking to one of my colleagues, Poppy Jamie, who also spoke, fellow presenter and entrepreneur, and she was talking about, you know, we were discussing about how even in the last year and a half, it's starting to reach a bit of a tipping point, the conversations that we have, and even in particular, you know, mental health affecting men and how there was a day, you know, um, dedicated to sharing that conversation. I just think it's great because, you know, it gets, I think in, in my experience of, of going to various, I don't know, um, whether it's like a sort of pet personal development weekend or whether it's like a, a Tony Robbins event or a landmark, yeah. you know, forum or any of these things, um, in my experience, the more that people kind of stand up and share their anecdotally about their lives and, and what they're dealing with, then it kind of gives other people permission, you know, in, to do it themselves and, and it gives them the confidence to also share. So that's why the more you talk about it, better. And also, you know, it, it makes you feel good to, to get these things out and... and like I said at the, at the top of my speech, you know, my mum always says, you know, if you break your leg, you, it's in plaster, everybody knows. Um, when it's to do with mental health, you can quite honestly just sort of crack on and on, which would be any the wiser. So it's important that we then dedicate time to really discuss it. Um, and also we, would, we kind of touched on the fact that in the States, there's a culture... I think they're a little bit more far forward in, you know, new age thinking and just sort of self-help books and, and, you know, like people talk about therapy like it's a lot more of a kind of everyday occurrence than we ever do. Um, and I still think the whole the British idea of, you know, everything will be fine and have a cup of tea, you know, is still very much there. Or even just drown sorrows, you know, which is why I spoke about alcoholism and, you know, the effect of alcohol when you're using it as a coping strategy. So, yeah. yeah. So you recently... Sort of developed a vegan app called yeah. Yappy. Yeah. Um, and you spoke about in your transition into veganism, veganism quite a bit. Yeah. Do you think sort of your your transition into that has helped with your own personal mental health a bit? Oh, absolutely. Because you know, for so many reasons, if I was to kind of fine tune it, I think, and to really um, work out what the main points are, I would say that you know, on a sort of like biochemical level, on a scientific sort of physical level when you're eating better you do feel better you know it's as simple as that and it was only when I actually you know really went for it and kind of changed my diet and because the thing about sort of going vegan and I know it's a bit of a buzzword at the moment and veganery which was incredible I was one of the ambassadors of veganery was one of the biggest that we've ever had you know the charity that encourages people to go vegan for January um I know that everyone's talking about it right now but the key thing to understand if you're thinking about going vegan is that when you give up meat and dairy, um, there are other things that you wouldn't, you know, for example, you go into a news agency bar, bar of chocolate and it's that disposable energy. Yeah. You're when you're cutting out the meat and the dairy, you're not you're not buying those sorts of things because they have milk powder in them or they have, you know, butter and yeah. so by default you're actually getting rid of a lot of white refined sugar, which acts as like is one of the biggest like legal drugs ever, yeah. um, along with alcohol, um, that is so destructive. Um, so it's not just about the vegan, it's also about the knock-on effect of what the diet ends up becoming, you know, a lot less sort of like spiking of insulin. Also on a sort of karmic level as well, which can affect your mental health, you know, the fact that you're really thinking about um, the world and your the, the impact that you have when you make a decision not to, you know, consume. I always laugh at my friends, but if they have a steak, I'll be like, are you enjoying your death and destruction? Yeah. <laughs> Things like that, but... But no, but to, you know, like not to judge anyone, I've been vegan for three years, I'm 36 now, so obviously, you know, I've been eating meat for a long time. But I think that for me personally, um, I just feel better about myself because I know that I'm, another individual doesn't have to die for me to live. And, um, and yeah, and I think those two elements from a health perspective and just, just being good to myself, but also to the environment, and to the animals, as it were, indirectly, it just makes me feel better. And when you feel better and less guilty and just that you're doing things for a good reason to support yourself, then that in turn, you know, in, improves your mental health as well. Yeah. I believe. All right. Thank you very much for your Thank time. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.